Hi, I'm Ellen McCauley, and I'm at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York. Tonight, we're honored to have guest speakers. Put It Simply Organizing is here tonight to help us and to tell us about a link between clutter and obesity. Put It Simply Organizing is a manliest New York-based professional organizing business that services Central New York, including Syracuse and the surrounding areas. Liz, is it Bremer or Bremer? Liz Bremer is a certified professional organizer and the owner of Put It Simply Organizing. She's a proud member of the National Association of Professional Organizers, which is called NAPO, and she assists clients with their most difficult spaces in organizing challenges. She's got a master's degree from SU and eight years experience working in the environmental consulting industry. And as a project manager, she acquired the skills and experience to manage complex projects and she exceeds all of her client expectations. With her passion and this experience, she loves to create orderly spaces. She goes in and looks at your junk and says, let me roll up my sleeves and get to work. She's helped hundreds of clients far worse than all of you throughout Central New York. And she's looking forward to helping us all get organized. Joining her tonight is Jennifer Nice. And she's an organizing associate with Put It Simply Organizing. And she's also a proud member of NAPO. And they don't let everyone in NAPO. You really have to have a lot of credentials for that. She uses her creativity and vision to plan and implement a vast array of projects. She has her bachelor's in psychology, which you really need to help some people get rid of their clutter. Because a lot of clutter is just like, wait, everybody, it's right here. I can't get rid of those kids' artwork from uh, 1980. Yes, you can. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> also, uh, she got that degree from Oswego, and she has 10 years of uh, experience in the service industry. Her human services background and management skills enhance the organizing project she works on, and she's got this empathetic approach and results-oriented style. She's got a unique style, all her own, and she's going to inspire us to get organized. So I'd like to invite all of you to give a warm welcome to Liz. Are you going to begin? Come right over, Liz. Thank you very much, Ellen, for that wonderful introduction. So as Ellen said, my name is Liz Bremer, and I am the owner and a certified professional organizer with Put It Simply Organizing. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight for this workshop. Um, I wanted to kind of just explain what an organizer is. So one way to think about what an organizer does is to equate it to a personal trainer. So much like how a personal trainer helps you with your weight and health goal goals, a professional organizer helps you um, organize your lifestyle, your physical surroundings, when you've just become too overwhelmed to tackle the job yourself. Um, so to get us started tonight, I'd like each of you to turn to a neighbor next to you and share what you find the most challenging thing to keep organized in your home. All right. I will take some volunteers to share their answers. Does anyone want to share? Yes. Basement, yes, catch all sometimes. Anyone else? Shoes, yeah, <laughs> yes, the guilty pleasure. Anyone else? My yeah. kitchen counter. Kitchen counters, oh good, we'll touch on that tonight. Anything else? Mail, someone said? Mail. Mail, paper, oh, yes, yeah. yes, oh, absolutely. Yes, can definitely relate, there's too much of that. And memorabilia. Memorabilia, yes, yes, absolutely, yep. Um, so I think we can all agree that getting and staying organized can be quite a challenge. That's why we're so excited to be here tonight to share with you um, a couple things. We're going to be talking about what experts say about the link between clutter and weight. We want to tell you about a book that we recommend on the topic. And we also want to share um, some ideas on what to do in your kitchen to set yourself up 
for success with both weight and organizing goals that you have. So I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer Nice, and she will share with you um, the, what the experts are saying. Thank you, Liz. Often when we think about organizing, we think of the organizing section of a store. The shiny new bins, the baskets, the, book, the bookshelves, the filing folders. But the concern is attempting to buy the, disorganize, the disorganization away is um, often a common pitfall in getting organized. Um, I had a client who wanted her spices organized. So I asked her the question, the planning question, what has worked for you and what hasn't worked for you? She said she had purchased a product that promised to organize her spices. Um, come to find out, it had been over a year and I had gone to her house and she still had the spice rack in the box wrapped up with the receipt. Um, so how was it working for her? It wasn't. Her spices continued to be disorganized, spilling over in the shelf. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, Peter Walsh said it best. I don't know if any of you have heard of Peter Walsh before. He's wonderful. He's an organizing guru. He has been on Rachel Ray, Oprah Winfrey. He speaks a lot about the things that we'll be discussing tonight. We are constantly bombarded with messages that tell us we will lead the life we want if we purchase the right things. We'll be happier, skinnier, sexier, smarter, faster. Our kids will be better. Our relationships will be better. But we end up buying these products, but what we are really doing is investing in the promise that the product offers. So if we can't buy our clutter away, what do we do? Experts say that clutter can be defined as delayed decisions. So if you can't find a home, get rid of it. Um, it's better to have to buy a few things than to store a hundred things that you don't need. Um, you, end, you end up buying less because you know what you have. Um, another form of, let's talk about another form of delay. Why are you delaying organizing your home? It's important to figure out what's going on for you. You want to observe the feelings about organizing and your behaviors around organizing because it can be very stressful to look at a space and think that you have to organize it. Um, so organizing Thinking about that can cause a lot of anxiety for people. It doesn't feel good, so we just simply don't do it. So we often turn to what reduces our anxiety. Electronics, watching TV, eating, which take, often can take away anxiety. Um, so staying stagnant and emotional eating results in difficulty maintaining weight. Some find clutter and weight a link. Is it a link for you? So alter alternatively, taking care of our home means taking care of ourselves. What your home looks like often reflects what's going on in your head and vice versa. Clearing your home clears the clutter, just like Ellen had mentioned. So it's really important to be good to yourself and undertake, when you take, undertake organizing projects, ensure you're making good food choices, you're sleeping and exercising as well. So in turn, having an organizing home will help you to have your house function for you. I'll pass it over to Liz. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, a recent study showed that people with super cluttered homes were 77% more likely to struggle with their weight. Why is this? Going back to Peter Walsh again, um, he thinks it's because people can't make their best, most healthiest decisions um, in a cluttered, messy, and disorganized home. So in his book, it's called Lose the Clutter, Lose the Weight. And um, I actually made a copy of the front and back cover in your handout so you can get a little bit more information on that. Um, he presents a six-week program which includes um, a decluttering plan room by room. It includes an eating plan as well as an exercise plan. Um, this book can be found at your library. This is actually from the library, as well as um, on Amazon. And last time I checked, it was $6.62. Um, so in this book, there's a key idea about how to approach a space, and I really love this. He, he asks, he wants you to ask yourself the question, what do I want this room to do for me? 
So this focuses on the function of the room rather than focusing on the aesthetics of the room. And basically what you'll do is you'll create a vision for your space. Um, just like any, any good project, starting with a vision is a, is a good place to start. So um, I want to ask you what you want your kitchen to do for you. Do you want it to provide ease of preparing healthy meals and nutritious, um, nutritious choices in your life? Do you want it to serve as a place to gather with loved ones, with friends, um, to enjoy some time with them? Peter Walsh says, and I'm going to actually read a little excerpt from here. I really like this. He says, the basic premise in the kitchen is you can't make your best, healthiest choices in a cluttered, disorganized environment. When you come home from a busy day and you can barely open the cabinet holding the pots and pans without them all falling out on you, you may be more likely to give up on, a, on preparing dinner and instead just order takeout. Similarly, if your pantry is crammed with foods which are unhealthy or <coughs> expired, you may be grabbing foods which aren't helping you live the life you want. They're just the ones you could access. Um, so he spends a fair amount of time in his book looking at how to organize your kitchen so that you can easily make healthy choices and nutritious meals that fuel the life that you want to live. So I am going to spend some time tonight focusing on organizing your kitchen. Um, I'm going to start off by giving you a couple tips about, about organizing and then we'll roll into how to maintain that, two very important parts. Um, so to start off with organizing, I encourage you to remove clutter and items not related to kitchen functioning. Um, starting off with the counters someone mentioned, clear off those counters um, so that they're accessible for use. And um, if, if you don't, this is a general rule, but if you don't use something once a week, like an appliance once a week, you may want to consider storing it away or even questioning whether you even need it at all. Um, and keeping your, your counters clear helps you keep a clean kitchen. The less clutter, it's much easier to wipe down surfaces, so you're going to end up having a more healthy, um, inviting environment. And um, the other, another tip that I have for you is to consider accessibility. So think about the, the old, um, you know, most use, have it handy, that sort of accessibility, but also um, thinking about storing heavy things low, light things high, um, having things um, so that they're easy to reach and retrieve. And also, um, think about where you're positioning certain things. So for example, in your pantry, you open up the pantry door, and instead of having at eye level the carbohydrates, your pastas and your rices staring right at you when you open your pantry, you may want to consider flipping some things around and having the shelf with the protein or vegetables staring right at you when you open that pantry. Um, and then another area is look at your spices. Keep those organized. If, if you open it up, you smell them. They don't, they don't smell anymore. They're probably old. Think about refreshing them. Um, spices do wonderful things to healthy foods. They enhance them without adding a lot of um, calories or fat. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention about organizing is consider keeping food behind closed doors. So I see a lot of times the cabinets are so full um, often with expired old food, that food starts creeping out onto counters and, and out. And then, of course, that's kind of a visual cue to eat. Um, so try to get your food behind the closed doors. So now talking about <coughs> maintaining, um, we, will, we will talk in a moment just about uh, maintaining your kitchen.